Welcome to the Literary Digest. Please subscribe to the channel or give a like and comment on this video if you find it helpful to help us reach more people. What's the rush? It's a bright, sunny day outside. We can always start work tomorrow, right? Tomorrow. The problem with tomorrow is that there's always another one right around the corner. Before you know it, you've spent a week, a month, or even a year putting things off until tomorrow. If you're tired of being in the planning and ruminating stages of your dream projects, then you've come to the right place. Often getting unstuck and moving forward, it isn't as easy as flipping a switch. As you'll see in the summary, there are usually some deep-seated fears, worries, or hang-ups that are keeping you from taking that first step. But you shouldn't let those hold you back either. Time is indeed precious, and now it's time for you to take control and get to work. Chapter 1 Understanding and Overcoming Procrastination Procrastination, ah, it's a word most people know well. In fact, you might even identify as a first-rate procrastinator, but hold that thought. Why label yourself? The truth is everyone procrastinates sometimes, and it all depends on what tasks lay ahead of us and whether or not that task is inside or outside of our comfort zone. Soccer superstar Lionel Messi isn't going to hesitate in making decisions when he's on the pitch, but he might if you ask him to sign up for a ballet class. So don't think of procrastination as a bad thing or a category to put yourself into. In areas where you're experienced and confident, you likely make decisions quickly and with ease. The key is to realize that this decisiveness is something you can harness in other areas of your life as well. It's like building a muscle. The more you flex it, the stronger it gets. It helps to build up your self-awareness around this issue. By recognizing the actions you gravitate toward when procrastinating, as well as understanding the deeper reasons behind these tendencies, you can better manage your impulses. Popular procrastinating activities include scrolling through social media, cleaning the house, exercising, or diving into mindless, low-priority tasks. Or you might engage in procrastination. Now that's what happens when you spend hours, days, months even engaged in busy work that's supposedly setting the table for doing something big. These are all ways we avoid facing more significant challenges, and recognizing these patterns is the first step to overcoming them. Now understanding the deeper underlying causes is even more important. These issues might include a fear of failure, resistance to authority, or even a fear of success and the pressures it brings. Fear of failure is a big one. Now let's face it. We tend to be our own harshest critics, and we make the mistake of associating our sense of self-worth with the results of our work. But we're not defined by our work, whether we're talking about successes or failures. The world may judge what we create, but that's out of our control, and worrying about what other people may or may not think isn't a good reason to avoid getting to work. Be kind to yourself, and be sure to maintain a healthy boundary between your work and your self-esteem. It's also easy to fall into the trap of perfectionism, where the desire to get everything just right can actually hold us back from starting anything at all. But let's just admit it. Perfection is a myth, and when we aim for it, it's only going to lead to insecurity, procrastination, and a never-ending feeling that nothing is ever enough. The irony is that your imperfections are what make you relatable and human. So strive for excellence, but not perfection. By starting now, even if things aren't perfect, you'll allow yourself to grow, learn, and avoid the paralysis that comes from trying to attain the unattainable. Chapter 2 Letting Go to Let Yourself Grow Our reasons for not doing something probably aren't limited to fear of failure and perfectionism. Sometimes the decision to take a big step and commit to doing something can simply seem like too big of an ask. The decision itself is scary. But this is usually an illusion. The very concept of big decisions is often blown out of proportion in your mind. What seems like a massive, life-changing decision is actually the result of many smaller decisions that have built up over time. 
The idea of the eureka moment or the brilliantly innovative breakthrough moment is the stuff of fantasy. It plays well in a movie, but all the real-world breakthroughs happen as a result of many small steps that came before it. So ease the burden on yourself and break down your own big decisions into smaller, more manageable ones. This way you can reduce the pressure and make smarter, faster choices. In the same vein, what you worry about rarely comes to pass. Worrying is like arguing with yourself about a future that hasn't happened yet and often never will. So it's best to stop wasting energy on fears about what might happen and instead take action. Even if things don't go as planned, you can always adjust course. The point is to start, not to get stuck in endless worry. Likewise, there are also pitfalls in dwelling on the past. Maybe you took a big swing in the past and it didn't go well. Now your brain is trying to avoid discomfort by constantly dredging up painful memories. Don't let it bring you down. Your memories often become distorted over time. In fact, the more times your brain recalls an old memory, the more it gets distorted from what really happened. Clinging to past events prevents you from living fully in the present. So let it go and let yourself grow. Move forward with curiosity and openness, allowing yourself to learn without the baggage of old mistakes or regrets. Decision is a trap that can drain your energy and potential over time. Every choice you face, whether it's good, bad, or somewhere in between, carries an element of the unknown. Instead of letting fear paralyze you, embrace that uncertainty and take action. A poor decision might sting temporarily, but being stuck in the void of indecision can leave you with a lifetime of regret. It's far better to move forward, even if only by small steps. Chapter 3 The Illusion of Big Decisions Good Old Analysis Paralysis Sometimes it happens when there's an abundance of options or you're just torn between doing something and not doing something. While an internal conflict can lead to indecision and frustration, it's not necessarily a bad thing to feel torn when making decisions. When part of you leans one way and part of you leans the other, that just means you have the useful ability to consider all sides. This can ultimately result in finding clarity. The trick is to acknowledge this push and pull, then make a proactive choice. Keep in mind that every decision you make, whether good or bad, contributes to your growth and understanding. Feeling slightly overwhelmed can be a good thing, too. Perhaps you've heard of Steve Jobs' famous reality distortion field. He was notorious for pushing himself and his team with overwhelming tasks that at first seemed impossible to achieve. But in the end, it was this push that allowed them to achieve more than they thought possible. You can take another page out of Steve Jobs' book and address decision fatigue by simplifying your life and reducing the number of choices in certain mundane areas, such as wardrobe choices. This frees up mental space for more important decisions. By focusing on just a few key options and systematizing or outsourcing low-value tasks, you can concentrate on what truly matters. At the same time, you can also remind yourself that most decisions aren't as permanent or crucial as they seem at the time. If you think about those big decisions you forced yourself to make in the past, you'll likely wonder why you were so worked up about it. So keep in mind, over time, most decisions will matter less than they do now. You might even ask yourself what's the worst that could happen. This simple question can put things in perspective and reduce the overwhelm. Plan for the worst case, likely case, and best case scenarios, and then move forward with confidence. Don't underestimate the power of a simple pros and cons list. It's a straightforward tool that often reveals the right path once it's laid out in front of you. Decision making is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it becomes. Learn from every choice you make, whether it leads to success or failure. With time and practice, you'll grow more confident and quicker in your decisions. Seek advice, reflect on past experiences, and continuously refine your approach. At the heart of all this is decisiveness, the ability to make choices quickly and effectively. 
It's a trait that draws on past experiences and the courage to face challenges head-on. The more decisive you become, the more you'll ignite action and progress, driving success in your life and those around you. Chapter 4, How to Start Now Okay, let's say you've overcome your fears and are ready to take that big step forward, but you're still unsure of where to start. Well, a valuable way to look at things is to first identify what you should not be doing. There are two key types of activities that you can eliminate right out of the gate. Time-wasting unimportant tasks and those that you can delegate to others. By minimizing low-value time-wasting tasks and leveraging high-value tasks that others can handle better than you, you can significantly streamline your to-do list and increase your productivity. Knowing what to avoid can clarify what truly deserves your attention, helping you to accomplish more with less effort. Understanding the difference between being busy, productive, and efficient is crucial. It's easy to fill your day with activities, but not all of them contribute to meaningful progress. A simple yet effective strategy is to keep a work log. By tracking how you spend your time in 30-minute blocks over two weeks, you gain invaluable insights into your daily rhythms, energy levels, and productivity patterns. This exercise not only highlights where your time is well spent, but also where it's wasted. It's a game changer that can reveal which times during the day you're most productive and help you optimize your schedule accordingly. Managing your task list effectively is another productivity booster. Start by ordering your tasks by importance and plan your list the night before. Keep your list short, 5 to 7 items at most, and then make a habit of removing something from the list if you need to add a new task. This disciplined approach prevents overwhelm and it keeps you focused on what truly matters. An even better list is what the author calls the to leverage list. Now this breaks down your tasks into three categories. Tasks you're better off leveraging or outsourcing, tasks that have already been delegated and only require some oversight or management, and tasks that only you can do. This brings us to a different way of thinking about tasks. Instead of asking yourself how to do something, start asking who can do it. Who has the experience, the passion, or the expertise to get it done quickly and well? This shift in perspective from how to who can save you time, reduce stress, and improve outcomes. When getting work done, you might find it best to isolate yourself from negative influences, electronic devices, and other distractions so that you can tap into your latent creativity. Exercise, travel, and inspiring books and materials can also spark new ideas. The key is to create an environment that inspires and allows your best ideas to surface. Finally, if you're still having trouble focusing, you might try gaming or tricking yourself into action. Know what triggers your focus, whether it's coffee, music, or a walk in nature, and use it to get into the zone. Competitives and competitions can also be a strong motivating factor, as can setting up a system of rewards and penalties for hitting or failing to hit certain benchmarks. For some, the accountability of making public declarations or having a partner or mentor involved is just a trick to getting more productive. The more you understand your own tendencies, the better you can set up systems to keep yourself on track. Chapter 5 Staying on Track and Moving Forward Decision-making doesn't end once you've decided to start now. More choices are bound to arise once you've gotten into the rhythm of your project. The key is not to let these choices derail your momentum. Nothing can make the decision process easier than having the guiding stars of a clear vision and strong values in your life. They simplify your decision-making by helping you stay focused on what truly matters. When you're clear on your purpose, tough choices become easier. The right answer will always be the one that best aligns with your vision and values. Let these be your roadmap, steering you through obstacles and keeping you on the right path. That said, don't consider changing your mind as a weakness. In reality, that's a strength. Holding on to bad decisions out of stubbornness or ego can lead to even worse outcomes. Embrace the ability to adapt and improve your decisions over time. 
As Winston Churchill wisely said, to improve is to change. To be perfect is to change often. Don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong. It's a sign of growth, not failure. There's also the fact that not all decisions require the same level of time and thought, and sometimes crowdsourcing your problems to your community can save time and provide valuable insights. Listen to what your customers, your followers, and your peers have to say. Now when it comes to sustained success, balancing work with rest and play is essential. After periods of intense focus, step back, recharge, and enjoy life. This balance not only helps you recover energy, but it also fosters creativity and ensures you stay mentally sharp. By maintaining this equilibrium, you can sustain enthusiasm and vitality throughout a long, fulfilling life. To keep your life organized and energized, take the time to regularly declutter both your physical and mental spaces. Now this means tidying up your environment, streamlining your schedule, and clearing out digital clutter. But it also means taking time to clear your mind through exercise, meditation, or even a retreat. These practices create room for new opportunities and fresh energy, allowing you to stay open to what life has to offer. Lastly, here's a handy tool for staying the course and being mindful that time is your most valuable resource, and to use it wisely. It's all about focusing on five key areas waste, invest, spend, leverage, and recover, or WISLR. Be ruthless in minimizing wasted time. Invest in long-term benefits that provide security, freedom, and leverage. Spend time wisely with family and smart people, and doing things you love. Leverage your past efforts so they automatically continue to provide for you. And don't forget to make time to recharge and recover. This approach ensures that you're always moving toward your goals without burning out. And while it should go without saying at this point, don't let fear of making the wrong choice paralyze you. Regret is far worse than failure. It's never too late to start, but waiting too long can mean missing out on opportunities. Take action now and refine your approach as you go. The key is to start. Perfection? That can come later. Final Summary The main takeaway of this summary to start now, Get Perfect Later by Rob Moore is that the best way to overcome procrastination and indecision is to understand where these impulses come from. Fear of failure and perfectionism can be dealt with through awareness and understanding of your habits and thought processes. Often fears come from an unrealistic, illogical place, and it's important to push through, start tasks immediately, and iterate along the way rather than waiting for perfect conditions or outcomes. Being more aware of your daily ups and downs can also help you schedule tasks for when you're at your peak performance time. You can also better manage and reduce your workload by using to-do lists to delegate more effectively. Regular clearouts are also recommended to maintain focus, balance work with rest, and leverage feedback through crowdsourcing. Ultimately, embrace imperfections, commit fully to decisions, and continuously refine your approach to achieve long-term success. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe to the Literary Digest for more videos like this one. And don't forget to leave a comment below and let us know what you found most helpful. Until next time, keep striving for success.